All right, here we have an Atwood machine on an incline. I'm given a coefficient of friction that applies to this block over here. Us equals 0.6. And then I have a three kilogram block hung over this pulley and everything is frictionless and the string is light so I don't have to worry about those complications. And I'm asked for the force of static friction on the five kilogram block. So one thing is, is not totally clear. I'll get my force vectors in here on the five kilogram block. That's equal to the tension in the string. It's the same tension in the string pulling on the three kilogram block. Probably should have drawn it like the same length. So there's that. Um, gravity pulls down from the three kilogram block. I'll write down that number in a second. And then on the five kilogram block, it was sitting on an inclined plane. So I'm going to have to do the usual decomposition of the force of gravity. So I have mg pointing straight down. I don't know if I'll compute it right here or not, but those are the numbers. And I'm going to have to split that into components. This angle is the same as the angle of incline, so I get mg cosine theta. And then this one, mg sine theta. Okay. So the thing I was mentioning at the beginning that's not really clear is I don't know just by staring at this whether or not the tension is bigger or whether or not mg sine theta is bigger. So I said compute the force of static friction on the five kilogram block. So we know it doesn't break loose, but we don't even know which way the static friction force points until we figure out which of these forces is bigger. If T is bigger, um, then the static friction force is going to have to point down the ramp in order to hold the block in place. If mg sine theta is bigger, then the friction force is going to have to help out T in order to hold the block in place. So it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. Okay, so let's think about how to attack the problem. Um, we should be able to compute mg sine theta easily enough and get the magnitude of this downward component of the force of gravity. And if I look at the analysis over here, it's also pretty easy to get the tension. So I don't know which I prefer to start first. I guess I'll start over here. And I know this is a static system. So the forces are balanced. So T is equal to, I keep doing that. T is equal to three times 9.8 mg. These forces are balanced because there's no motion. All right. And I get 29.4 newtons for that. And I know that's the same as this T. Tension is the same everywhere in the string, provided that um, you don't have any appreciable mass to it or any appreciable friction in the pulley. All right, then I can do this piece, mg sine theta. And that's 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 35 degrees. We get 28.1 for that. All right, so now I can figure out which way the static friction force points and how big it is. If there was no friction at all, 
this block would take off sliding up the ramp because the tension is bigger than this component of gravity. So our static friction force is not going to be maxed out. That was really kind of the trick of this problem. I think a lot of students uh, get that part of it wrong. They assume it's maximum. Well, it's not. The static friction is just enough to hold this thing in place. So it's going to be a little friction vector pointing down the ramp and just supplying that little difference in force to keep the block locked in place. So this looks like a difference of 1.3 newtons. And there's your answer. Now if I wanted to be a little more formal about the answer, I know this thing is motionless so the forces are balanced. Everything going up the ramp is equal to everything going down the ramp for this 5 kilogram block. And so 29.4 newtons up the ramp has to be equal to 28.1 newtons down the ramp plus the static friction force. And then if you do the subtraction, the static friction force is only 1.3 newtons. Now, if you were nervous about whether or not this exceeds the maximum value of static friction force, you could compute Fs, Fs max for comparison. Uh, but just at a glance, this isn't even close to the maximum value. And you were told in the problem the thing isn't moving, so I don't really have to do that part.